Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, I want to go ahead and look at one of the new features that shipped as part of Dynamics 365, and that's the concept of unified scheduling. So unified scheduling works in conjunction with the schedule board that you have when you're using field service and project service. So first off, if you're unfamiliar with the schedule board, the schedule board is a feature of the field service implementation that is part of project service as well. They've also enabled project service items to be scheduled through the schedule board. And so what it basically allows you to do is to schedule work orders automatically using kind of a drag and drop interface as well as using the schedule assistant to go out and find somebody who has the appropriate resources and capabilities to be able to work through something. Now that's a very powerful feature when you think about it from a field service perspective, but one of the cool things that they've allowed you to do is if you have the field service solution or the project service automation solution installed, you can also extend out that concept of unified scheduling and really use the schedule board to schedule anything that you want to do. So now imagine maybe you have a custom entity that you want to be able to, you know, schedule field service technicians or just people with inside your organization out to go out and deliver, or maybe you have an opportunity that has a need to have a service technician come out as a technical resource. You can enable the opportunity entity to be used for that unified scheduling process. And so now you're using the same schedule board and the same scheduling concepts that you would use to dispatch people out into the field to be able to dispatch them for other things outside of those concepts. And so that's really what we want to show you how to do today is, is how it it works, um, understand how to set it up and configure it, and then some baseline customizations that you can do to really get that moving forward. So let's go ahead and hop into the application and take a look at how this works. Now again, this does require either field service or project service automation to be installed. So even though you're scheduling non-field service and project service items using the schedule board, it still requires that functionality. So if you don't have one or the other installed, you won't be able to see this inside the application. However, since I do have it installed, I can go into resource scheduling and under the administration area of resource scheduling, it gives you an area to called enable resource scheduling for entities. So this is where we're going to go ahead and actually set that up. So I'll go ahead and click on this. This will open up my area where I configure it. So basically what you're doing, if you're not real familiar with how the scheduling process works using field service, you basically have to have two entities enabled in order to schedule something. You first need to have what's called a requirement record, which basically defines what you need in order to schedule this. So is there a specific skill set? Is there a time frame? Is there a, what's your starting window and your ending window? This needs to be established. And so this is something that does need to be created for each record that you intend to schedule using the scheduling option. Once you're going to physically schedule it, then it's going to create what's called a bookable resource booking. And so that's going to create the scheduling record, essentially, that's going to get scheduled inside the application. And so for you to be able to use a custom entity or a standard out of the box entity for that particular process, you do have to enable it for that entity first. So I can come into here, I could find, for example, opportunity, Then I have to establish those relationships. So basically what this is doing for us is this is setting it up for us so we don't necessarily have to go ahead and manually define the relationships. So I'm going to go ahead and have the system do this for us. And then I'm going to publish my customization. And once that customization has been published, it's now going to take you into the area where you can do some baseline configuration. So what this is really going to do is when the requirement record is established for this particular record, this is going to allow us to determine, you know, what is the default booking duration? What is the default committed status, active status? So if we have some specific items that we want to go through and set defaults for, so it comes in with that information, we don't necessarily, we can do that through here. This also allows us to associate it with a particular booking status. So most entities like the work order and the projects will have a booking status associated for them. If I wanted to, I could go in to the entity itself and I could define a booking status for that item to be able to facilitate that so I could use it for opportunity or I could use an existing item or I wouldn't necessarily even have to use 
any at this point, but I would recommend setting up something. So I defined one here earlier called new op status. Then I can define my, my default. So, you know, we know that a booking for an opportunity is probably going to take an hour. Um, our default committed status coming into the application allows us to determine, you know, if we what statuses we want to use. So we're going to say that it's committed, it's active, canceled for our default status. For our bookings, we're going to say that our default booking status is also canceled for canceled. And then if we wanted to do a default completed status, we could go ahead and do a default completed status. So you're basically defining what these items are looking like when it can, is going to go ahead and auto generate both the booking as well as the requirement. Now, if you had a custom entity that had specific things that map to things like longitude, latitude, a default duration, a work location, this is where I would also be able to go in and define what those situations look like using the attribute mapping. Now, I don't necessarily have to do that here, but this is where I could do that if I wanted to. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just save my opportunity option. So I've, in essence, basically enabled the opportunity for capabilities to be used from a schedule boarding standpoint. Now, if you're familiar with field service, you understand that when you create a work, work order, the item that you want to schedule inside the schedule board has a option that gets auto created for you. So in this particular situation, all I've really done is enable the entity. I haven't necessarily wrote or written any work workflows that are going to facilitate creating this automatically. That's something if we wanted to talk about it in another video, we could, but it's basically just using some of the standard workflow functionality that you're familiar with in the application. So now, if I were ultimately going to do this from an opportunity perspective, then what I would do is I would go into the opportunities and I would create my opportunity. So in this situation, I'll go ahead and open up an opportunity or create a new opportunity here that I want to work with. So we're going to go ahead and just call this needs assistance. on op items. We're going to set up an estimated close date on this for a couple days out. We'll put in an estimated revenue. Now we'll go ahead and save this. Now, like I said, under normal circumstances, if this was an entity that we wanted to kind of auto generate the scheduling information for us so we could have the requirement defined automatically, we would just simply define a workflow to do that. But behind the scenes, what's actually happening is if I go up into here, I will see a resource requirements record. And when I click on resource requirements, this is what is ultimately going to define what is required to schedule this out on the schedule board and what is going to create that schedule record that we now would have the ability to use inside the schedule board as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new resource requirement. And we'll just say, you know, when is this going to be scheduled from? We'll say it's going to be scheduled from today. Um, how do we want to allocate this? Uh, are we doing front end? How are we distributing this? I'm going to go ahead and just not worry about the allocation method. Say that the default duration on this is going to be an hour. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So this is going to create the requirement record that we now would be able to see on the schedule board to be able to go ahead and schedule this. So now if I were to go back into either field service, project service, or really even resource scheduling, I need to access my schedule board. So when I click on my schedule board, this is going to pull up my schedule board. That's going to give me all my filter capabilities that I would be able to do as part of this particular situation. Now, as I go into here, one of the things that you're going to notice is down on the bottom, I am now going to have an area where I could go ahead and schedule this resource inside the application. So here it shows me all of my items that are basically being needed to be scheduled as part of the application. So down here, it's looking at the individual items that, that are working on those situations. And if I scroll down, I can see my needs assistance on op item. Now, this is where if I was doing this from a actual deployment perspective, and I was going to use this to schedule opportunities, what I would probably do is go in and customize the schedule board to display 
opportunity information down here. So I would basically have a separate tab like you see for project and unscheduled work orders directly in here that would now give me the capabilities to just filter this by opportunity information. Now I don't see any resources here, so I'm just going to real quick remove Washington Territory, research my schedule board. shows me my people that are available to be scheduled for this particular item. Now I could just go ahead and drag this onto the schedule board, just like I would do any other item, place it in the spot that I want to work with. This will then register that. It'll then create a bookable resource booking for the person that we have scheduled this. And then they will be able to see this in either their field service mobile application, or they will simply be able to see this in their bookable resource bookings uh, through the application. But as you can see, this is a great way if you want to extend some of the functionality that's already there and bring it out into another app avenue that now we can really use this scheduling capabilities with the, refil with the filtering and all of that information moving forward. So that's going to do it for our look into how to use unified scheduling. Now, a couple of things that I didn't necessarily mention as we were going through the tutorial. The other nice thing about this is once you have this entity enabled for unified scheduling, you now have the same capabilities to work with this entity like you would in other scenarios. So let's say you're going to use uh, resource scheduling optimization to start optimizing uh, schedules and assigning work orders based upon minimum travel distance and some of those items. Now that that entity has been enabled, it's available for us to be considered as part of those resource scheduling optimization rules. So not only does it allow you to take advantage of the information from a physical scheduling standpoint, but it also gives you the capabilities to leverage some of the automation uh, items that are available from field service and utilize those to schedule those entities as well. So that's going to do it for this week's video. I uh, hope you enjoyed our look into the unified scheduling process. Again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.